brought it down because it was too bright. Yeah, he wants it back up. That's what he's saying. What? He wants it back up. That's what he's saying. I think passion and technology come together when, when there's an application. As soon as you find out about printing or you find out about photography or maybe some two-way communication you can do with the grandparents and kids, you get passion real quick. Dave Chalk Connected is brought to you by TELUS. The future is friendly. When I do anything, I gotta be really passionate. I'll admit, I was a holdout for digital cameras for probably two years. I mean, I talk about them, I know about them, but I was so used to the way I did things. And one summer, I borrowed Mike's digital camera and took a bunch of pictures, put them on my notebook computer, started to do the playback, and all of a sudden, I was transformed. I hooked it up to my printer, printed a few out, and like anything, the moment you are into it, you are into it. And that's what I tell people. You'll know, you'll know when that time is right. Take the picture, try it, and you'll never go back. Okay, this is good already, but I just need to know where this one's going to be used. Nick? Yeah, it's a DVD digital starter kit. Okay, I'm good. Let's go. Okay. It's kind of funny because most of today's talk about cameras is about digital. We tend to forget the past so quickly, but flash back the camera a couple of years to the 1960s. This is what you would have wanted to get under the Christmas tree. It's an original brownie by Kodak. This is the camera that really revolutionized picture taking in the home. Sold for about $12. Even in today's uh, increased dollar value, probably about $50 to $60 for the camera. This one still works. What made it great was the family could use it and it took, well, what were considered great pictures. These are two of them right here. I don't know if they're considered great. Well, certainly the content is. This is uh, Tristan, or one of them was. This one right here, one of the gentlemen on our set. When he was about 10 years old. You can see a couple of things. These pictures have faded, but to tell you the truth, the major reason for the fade here is the film wasn't developed right away. It sat in a drawer for a couple of years and was then developed. And this is the sort of thing that can happen. In today's digital world, we don't have any of these problems. Our pictures are taken perfectly right out of the gate. We can use them in many different ways. So let's flash the uh, time window forward a few years and take a look at where we are today. If you want state-of-the-art picture taking well above what this camera was, you're about $1,000. We're going to show you one now that has all the features you need for under $1,000, around the $900 price range, that will make you look like a professional. This is from Canon. It's called their G6, part of their power uh, shot line. And this is made for serious photo enthusiasts. It's got a lot of great automatic features, so you just can simply point and click, but it also has an immense amount of manual control, so you can really get down to the nitty gritty. As far as the LCD screen, you can uh, actually use it like a regular digital camera. Let me just turn it on here. Have the screen right on the back. You can also flip it out, and this is nice if you're going to be taking photos, kind of like a camcorder mode, or if you're going to be trying to crowd. take in a crowd. Exactly, I can get the down low shot here of Dave. Plus, you can even flip it around if you're really uh, vain like myself here and take uh, self-portraits. If you don't have any friends. A couple of other nice things about this one. It uses compact flash memory. Now, the nice thing about compact flash, it's one of the lowest cost memories in the marketplace. And it's compatible with a lot of other devices. So you can all afford to get a lot of the memory. A couple other quick things on it. What I like is the setup of this. It's very much modeled after a 35 millimeter camera that we're used to holding in our hands. The zoom on it is good, four times optical, which gives you the 35 millimeter to 120 millimeter, 140, 140 which is very uh, indicative of what your standard 35 millimeter would have been. The controls and dials are angled on the top, very easy to use. Got a hot shoe right here, which means you're going to get professional light attachment up on the top of it. And the focus, this is something to look for in the digital cameras. This has nine fields in its view, meaning if I'm zooming or taking a picture of something across the way and my subject isn't exactly centered in the lens, it'll make sure focusing is done accurately around the edge. And of course, what makes you really look like a professional is preset modes. This one has 12 of them. So while you're still learning the camera and not totally confident of setting up the aperture and all the other settings that go along with it, you can let the camera do it for you and you'll really pick up the great shots. It takes really uh, great quality images as well. Did we say seven? 
Seven. Seven. Here, here's what you get out of a seven, 7.1. 7 7.1 megapixel, megapixel camera. Take a look at that. This is when you're getting up to the 8.5 by 11. These are really high resolution. You can see the detail on this rose. And, and around 7, you've got all the resolution you need. Well, people always ask, do you really need that many megapixels? Well, you do if you're going to blow up images right. or if you're going to crop images. Maybe you've taken a large scene, but you want to zoom yeah. in on a particular person. And that is a real key thing. Let's say, for example, you've taken this shot here, but you'd really like to use this portion of the rose. You can now, with a 7 megapixel camera, go in, clip that, reprint it again in this size or maybe blow it back up and still have a pretty good picture from it. It's also got a built-in image processor so you can take the pictures quickly. That's one of the things, you know, with older digital cameras that didn't take them fast enough. Now you can click away with this. And it's also got special scene detection. Believe it or not, this camera has a built-in database of thousands of different scenery images. So now when you're taking pictures, it'll automatically reference those to make sure that you've got the best quality picture. And it's kind of cool because if it's a flower, if it's a scene, if it's a building like this, it uses its database to tweak the image. So as a final word, if you're still using your brownie and you want to step up a little bit here and you are looking for professional quality imagery, take a look. A lot of wonderful cameras out there. And, and cut. Cut, you got it. Good. Very nice. Beautiful. When you go shopping for a digital camera, there are plenty of options to consider. The most important things to figure out is what you want to be able to do with your camera and what you want to spend. This will help you narrow down the range of cameras to choose from. Once you do that, you're nearly there. For some people, simplicity and portability are the two most important features. If you do a lot of traveling or you just want a camera you can take with you wherever you go, size will be an important factor. If you want the ultimate in portability, don't let yourself be seduced by a large camera with a lot of bells and whistles you know you'll never use. And if you're an aspiring professional photographer, don't think you'll be satisfied with the tiniest camera on the market, because you'll probably find that it can't do everything you want. When you find a number of cameras that offer basically what you're looking for in the price range you want, then compare the specs. Things like megapixel resolution, optical zoom range, battery life, data storage format and capacity, and of course, read reviews. In the end, you should be able to pick a camera that you'll be more than satisfied with. doubt that mobile phones really have brought us all closer together. Tells Mobility's taken that one step further now with their one megapixel camera phones. Got models from AudioVox, even some from Samsung here as well. And with one megapixel, that actually increases the resolution, I think, about three times over the previous generations. And that's handy for me. I don't always carry a digital camera around with me, but I always do carry my phone. So if I see something that I like, a scene or a person that I haven't seen for a while, I can snap that photo and presto kazinga, I've got it right on my phone. And once I have it on my phone, I can add all sorts of things, text, sound, then email it out. I can even send it to other camera phones or take it to my online photo album. You can create your own by going to mytelusmobility.com. There you can upload all of your photos. And the great thing is that you can share that unique web address with all your family and friends. They can go up, see all the photos that you've taken, and even have some prints developed with one of the photo partners that are available up on the site. So now when you're out on the road, You've got your camera phone with you. Not only can you talk, but you can capture those special moments when you come across them. Digital cameras are everywhere. It seems like everyone either wants one or has one, and why not? They are fun to use and can be very rewarding. Here's a great way for Windows XP users to showcase their latest pictures. If you've got photos sitting on your computer, you can put them to use as your own personal slideshow screensaver. Find the pictures that you would like to have shown and make sure that they are placed into the My Pictures folder that resides in your My Documents folder. Now right-click an empty spot on your desktop and then click Properties. Choose the Screensaver tab and in the Screensaver list, select My Pictures Slideshow. Use Settings to make any adjustments, such as how often the picture should change, what size they should be, and whether you want to use transition effects between pictures. Then click OK. Now your screensaver is a random display of the pictures taken from your My Pictures folder. Your photos don't have to just sit on your hard drive taking up space. With a little creativity, you can come up with many ideas to put them to use. 
You know, I was out a little while ago, and we were at this party, and people start talking about their kids, and of course you want to show all the pictures, and they're all out on the table. And I reached for my pocket, and I thought, I forgot my wallet. And I go, no, I don't have any. And all of a sudden, I remember my camera phone was in my pocket. And just earlier, I had taken some pictures of the kids. And I was using those wallpaper savers, so when the phone rings, so I had the most current and best pictures of anyone, as it turned out. Funny how much work goes into you know three minutes of video. Yeah, I'm a lot of people don't realize what it takes, how much ends up on the cutting room floor, so to speak. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of energy just to get a good 30 seconds. You know, when we look back on the latter part of the 20th century, one of the things we will certainly be known for is becoming a disposable society. Take disposable cameras, for example. Popular Science recently estimated that 200 million of these are sold every year. By the end of next year, it could be up to 225 million. Sad when you think about it, because far too much goes into landfill. Well, who would have thought that digital cameras could have helped put an ebb to this growing trend of disposable devices? This is a new disposable camera, but let's say more than that, it's recyclable. Mike, let me file this one where it belongs. Good shot. This one here is from CVS, and they've got two different models. And like you said, believe it or not, it is one of those uh, recyclable cameras. The, the higher end model actually has a 1.4 inch display screen here, so you can actually see the picture you've just taken. And that's the nice feature of digital cameras. You can delete the last one you've taken and take it again. Now, a lot of people are going to be wondering, so how do we get a disposable camera when now we've got a screen and a flash and digital circuitry inside? Well, part of the reason that popular science believed that most of the cameras are not recycled is there wasn't enough incentive. They weren't worth enough. So here, these are going to shortly be available in places like London Drugs and popular places in the U.S. for about a $25 U.S. charge right now. That's all we know the price would possibly be. You're going to use the camera, take up to 25 pictures, turn the camera in, and then it's up to the picture processing place to send the camera back for recycling. But there's now an incentive because there's more money tied around the camera. There is a version available too, which I think will be about $10 US. It doesn't have the display screen on the back, um, but still allows you to take some good pictures. We even we have a few here that we're taking, and these kind of all, the, all same. the same. So anyway, you can see that if you happen to take this many pictures of the same person, you can take up to 25 of these. And uh, I've got to admit, this is good quality. I know Disneyland is going to start carrying these. You can get them on pictures, or you can also get them returned on a CD. So you uh, lose your camera, or uh, don't know how to, or you wish you had a digital camera, this is a great way to try it out. Well, it's kind of cool. It's a two megapixel camera, so the quality is half decent. And like you said, get four by six prints and that photo CD, so you can email the pictures to your friends and family. When it comes to portable gadgets, there's still nothing that beats a miniature camera, the kind that nobody even notices you're carrying. Check out the Digital Dream Less Beyond S camera. It looks just like a Zippo lighter, but flip the lid and you've got a camera capable of capturing 640 by 480 pixel photos, full television resolution. For convenience, the camera offers a quick shot feature to allow you to take pictures by simply flipping the lid, very inconspicuous, and a surveillance mode which lets the camera take a series of shots at pre-specified intervals up to 90 minutes apart, so you can catch all the action without even being there. But of course it doesn't end there. It's also a video clip recorder capable of capturing 25 seconds of video with sound, a voice recorder for taking mental notes while you're on the case, and a webcam. The camera also functions as a data storage device for taking your most precious documents with you wherever you go. The perfect camera for your next undercover caper. I love technology, but we are entering a period where I call it the Big Bang or the digital Big Bang because we have so many industries all clamoring to get content in our home. The Sonys of the world are buying uh, motion picture companies. Cisco's of the world are putting out boom boxes. And everything from the telephone companies to the cable companies are changing from content to telephones. And everything's coming around content. This big bang that I'm talking about is everyone colliding into the same spot. So the differentiation is going to get smaller and all of a sudden, kaboom. But it's going to be exciting.
You want a shocking thing that happened to me? I had one happen. We were doing a live show, Mike and I, and I remember this one time he had to take this trip to England. And it was going to be the first time I had to do the whole show by myself. We were using this resuscitation yeah. device so that brought supposedly people that were dying back to life. And I went to zap this thing, and, and all of a sudden I felt a little bit of the shock. So I thought, okay, what if it killed me? I go down behind the counter, and everyone, I hear a gasp on the set, oh my God, he's dead. But we're on live TV, so everyone had to stay quiet to see if I would come back to life. And I was just tricking them all. Well, we always have one of those moments where we'd love to die on television, and I just had it. I think digital photography is really cool and I, you know, I probably take hundreds of more pictures now than I used to with just a regular film camera and it's cool. I've got them on my hard drive and my home office computer and I've got computers networked through the house and even up to my TV so uh, I can actually enjoy slideshows right on my TV and listening to my favorite music. It's, it's super cool. Can I get everyone else in their places please? Yeah. Well, here's a camera you certainly wouldn't want to dispose of. It's from Casio. It's a sub $500, brand new on the market. Lots of cool features. Before I go into it, I'm going to let Mike explain it. This is one he's been using, and I think he loves it. I've been using it for a couple months, and it's one of my favorite little subcompact cameras that I've tried out so far. You know, it's actually even smaller than the uh, disposable camera we've talked about. This is their uh, XLM X or EXZ50 model. It's a five megapixel camera, so it takes brilliant shots mm -hmm. as far as quality. And it's also got a three times optical zoom as well. My favorite feature really is the, uh, the screen on the back. It's actually a two inch LCD screen. So it's much larger than the typical mm -hmm. LCD screen you'd find on digital cameras. So super easy for viewing the photos that you've just taken or using it as a viewfinder as well. Now I think one of the things that frustrates many people when they buy their first digital camera is with a regular film, you hit the button, the picture's taken right away. With this one, in one one hundredth of a second after you hit the shutter button, the picture is taken, which is incredibly fast compared to some of the cameras that were in the marketplace. And when you power this one up, it's just over a second to come up to power to take the shot. One point six seconds. There's the man. That's why we pay him the big bucks. This camera, though, is really a breakthrough in that in that sense because many times you want to take the picture, the action's already gone. You know, it, it's over by the time you get to it. You know, one really convenient feature is the battery life on this one. It actually can take up to 390 pictures, that's without flash, mm -hmm. on one single charge. That's, that's good. And it takes the convenient little SD cards. It does come with nine megabytes of memory built in, but you can use these little SD cards to take hundreds and hundreds of And you can pick these up anywhere and they're reasonably priced. Exactly. One other thing on the focus, we fumble and, and fight for it here. Seven point focus, meaning if you're not quite focused or you've got something offset in your camera, it's a great way to get guarantee that all the focus areas are covered off. A lot of other features, but one thing I want to show you, it does include the uh, docking station here as well too. Now a couple neat things, one button control on here starts a picture show of all the pictures you have in. One other button will automatically upload them to your computer. At the very same time the docking station does connect to your computer and it will also charge the camera. So if you're looking for a sub $500 camera, all the features and again really small, as small as a disposable camera, take a look at the Casio. Well, just like with the old-fashioned film cameras, with your new digital camera, of course, there are all sorts of accessories out there that you can invest your money in. Some are good, and some are excellent. One of the excellent ones out there is the ability to change the focal length of the camera. These are from a company called Optics out of Japan. They are good optics lenses that snap onto the front of your camera. Now, with higher-end, larger, especially SLR-type cameras, there's usually a thread mount on the front. But on the more compact ones, that isn't an option. So these magnetically mount. The manufacturer gives you a couple rings you can put on the front of your camera to make it a magnetic surface, and these just pop on the front. I'm going to come up to the camera here just to show you how these work. Now, the first one I have here is a wide angle. It's a .45. Therefore, it will double the field of view when it's snapped onto the front, therefore getting twice as much in the shot. The other one is a telephoto lens and it's a 1.5 on the telephoto, meaning that you have one and a half times as much as you had on your previous lens. And you can get some pretty tight shots. Now, the nice thing about these, they can just be kept in your pocket or in your bag, snap them on the front, and you get some great pictures that you couldn't have had before. Now, the other area of operating for your camera that is really handy is the memory. It means you can take more pictures, but you can also take them faster. Well, that's one of the first things you buy when you buy a digital camera, an extra memory card. Super important, especially if you've got one of the newer ones, a 4 megapixel or up, to make sure that you get a fast memory card. It's kind of like CD-ROM drives. They've got the speed ratings. Well, memory cards have that, too. These are 32 times speed, so they're typically about 4 to 8 times faster than the traditional cards that are out there right now. 
What does that mean? Faster read and write speeds. As far as reading, that means you can view the pictures faster on the back of the LCD screen. And transfer them off the camera quicker. Exactly. And as far as the write speed, that means you'll be able to take the pictures faster. There's not that lag. And that is the frustrating thing. Now, it's partly to do with the circuitry in the camera, but by fa having faster memory, you can take pictures faster together. Now, prices on these, remember, you can't change the memory that comes in your camera. We have three examples here just to give you an idea of the different memories in the marketplace. Yeah, if you've got an Olympus or a Fuji camera, typically those are XD cards. And again, those are the specific ones that go in your camera. You can find that out. SD and also compact flash. These are all 256 megabytes. Mm -hmm. The small one here goes for about $100. The next size up, the SD cards, uh, typically the price range right now, 90 and when you get to the compact flash, these go for about $70. So they're cheaper, but they're also one of the fastest out there right now. So you want higher capacity to take more pictures and speed enabling the camera to go quicker. And if I didn't mention it, these pop-on lenses start around $80 Canadian. Okay. Good. All right. Woo. Um, you know, as far as public speaking and actually talking to people about technology, I really enjoy doing it. Uh, you can probably see in the show, and if you know me personally, I love the gadgets. I love seeing how I can use them in my life. And if I do find something that works for me, I love telling people about it. If I could only give people one tip of something that they could do with their digital camera to make their life better, it's no question, because the thing I cherish most in life is time, and you can never get it back. Take pictures, take hundreds, take thousands, take millions, fill up a whole hard drive because they're digital. They live forever, you can share them. And when you look back in a couple of years, you think, oh my God, I wish I'd taken more. And I'm someone who does take thousands, so believe me, take as many as you can. Dave Chalk Connected is brought to you by TELUS. The future is friendly. <laughs> uh, no. I love Dave, and there's no rivalry. Marty. No, wait, no, wait. Action. Okay, no, there's Bradley. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think of that. Yes. The truth is disposable. Throw. Over. Good shot. Well, I would like to think that I know a lot more about technology than Dave does. Uh, don't tell them that. <laughs>